photos wonderfully document how the film industry has been transporting Angelinos to different times and places for more than a century. And not just through tours. Once upon a time, outposts of unreality were popping up all over Los Angeles. Well, for anybody who's been, for instance, to Hollywood Highland, you've got a full-size replica of the Intolerance set that was uh, W.D. Griffith, right? And that was originally where the Vista Theater is, which I forget what the two streets are, but um, that was a set that was out in the middle of nowhere. In fact, a lot of Hollywood designers, a lot of Hollywood set designers also worked as architects designing homes, and a lot of architects worked in the Hollywood business in designing sets. So there was a real cross-pollination in the physical environment. You couldn't go too far through this city without somebody filming something or some set somewhere. So we kind of grew up in Los Angeles that this was a sort of an ordinary thing. It wasn't really weird. And I think that's one of their inspirations for a lot of the people who wanted to do these tours is the fact that you could finally get backstage and see how the films were being made. That would be great. So all over Los Angeles, there were a lot of the sets, especially as you came out into the San Fernando Valley. Here's a good example. Um, you're driving down and you're passing what is now the uh, the Jim Henson Studios, which was A&M Records, which before before that was Charlie Chaplin's studio. And he built what looks like a residential facade. The same architect uh, who designed the studio also built houses for Charlie Chaplin just down the street. You had a lot of that. You had a lot of, once again, a lot of the architects were working as, um, in the movie studios and a lot of the movie studio people were working as architects as well too. So there was such a cross. That's why you had these kind of funky little restaurants. Uh, you had what, Pig and Whistle. You had the Tam O'Shanter. You had, you had quite a few of these. You had the Clifton's. Clifton's I think is probably one of the best examples. A lot of people don't realize that Los Angeles, prior to World War II, manufactured more tires than any other city in the United States other than Akron. And so you don't just build a tire factory, you build the Babylon Tire Factory, which is the thing that's, um, uh, the thing that's in the city of commerce, the old Goodrich thing, that's the facade looked like as a Babylonian temple. So even industrial buildings had to be a little bit more showy just to take advantage of it. Coca-Cola is housed in what looks like a steamship from the 30s. So because this was a show busy kind of town, you could, you could get away with those sort of things. LA is just full of themed buildings. We have a lot of these things in this city. And it's just because the weather allows you to do it and the people are dreamers and you're not as concerned about the weather. You can design kind of whatever you want. We started off very differently than any other American city. We were governed differently than any other American city. We have an image that's different than any other American city, and we've lived up to it. it, it, it it's, a weird, it's a weird city, and that's one of the reasons why things like the Universal Studios Tour could exist and why Disneyland could be invented. Um, only really in Los Angeles could that be.